In this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about death consciousness. Have a nice life's music is honestly so unreal. Their music reminds you of pure depression. Not that weak, not that Lil Peep Hellboy teenage depression. Depression isn't about just being sad. Shut the f up, no one cares. Nah, G, this is the I actually have serious issues that I need to solve music. This is that I'm a 40 year old bold man with family issues. <laughs> your sister? Hell yes. <laughs> Personally, I don't listen to them that much because I have my life together now. Back when I used to abuse cigarettes, alcohol, energy drinks and weed, usually all together at once and never talk to women in real life, it felt like it belonged and I used to bump a lot of have a nice life. It feels weird to listen to them when you have any kind of positivity in your life because that consciousness makes you feel so powerless and insecure. Not many people know this but that consciousness is actually a double album. The first part named The Plow That Broke The Plains including these songs and the second one named The Future including these songs. Honestly, it's absolutely fucking astonishing what they were able to do especially in 2008 when they were making this type of music. You know, you can take one look at the artists themselves and think, hey, they seem like normal people, you know? You wouldn't expect the dude on the right, the vocalist, to go absolutely fucking wild in live shows. The maximum quote unquote fucked upness you would expect this man to do is to drop his son off at his school in his fourth focus and then watch gay BBC porn bent over like a troll in the basement. Which we all do, so it doesn't especially stand out. The guy on the left looks like your friend who you play video games with and occasionally get a beer with. Now you might be thinking, how does a man get to this point? Because it is easily the most down bad, depressed album I've ever come across and the band member Dan Barrett said this. The lyrics were written simultaneously with the songs, though I tend to work in scraps. I'm constantly writing, then culling pieces that I think fit the music to build entire songs around. At the time I had a job where I would have to be into work at 4.30 in the morning, alone in a giant building, at a desk in front of a giant window. I wrote rearms and rearms during that time. You also might have noticed that the song sounds very lo-fi. This was because a lot of the album was recorded with the pinhole microphone on Dan's laptop. And the whole album cost less than a thousand dollars to make, which is an insane price because a lot of albums cost millions to make. Kanye once went into a debt of 600k because he was making late registration. Albums are expensive, so you DMing me to make a video about your shitty mixtape which you probably just crumbled up in your cracked version of FL Studio in a week does not work here, man. They've said that the philosophy of the most retarded philosopher ever, Friedrich Nietzsche, had a lot of influence on their music. And this is the thing, Nietzsche was going off about nihilism and how life doesn't matter and generally he was being a fucking pussy. And you dumbasses actually take advice from a dude who got zero pussy in his life, died alone and went insane when he saw a horse getting beat. What? Bro, I can see a horse getting his cheeks clapped by 8 black dudes. DISGUSTING! I would not even blink. And this man went insane. And Nietzsche's philosophy and him in general feels a lot like listening to have a nice life. Which means that if you just lift and talk to women, you won't feel this way anymore. If Friedrich Nietzsche just got a hand job, even an unenthusiastic one, he would have lasted for years and he would not have gone on about his negative bullshit. Literally the same principle applies for have a nice life listeners. I would know, I've been there guys. What the this album had been in recording for 5 years, between 2002 to 2007, and stayed in obscurity for a long while, until 4chan slash Mew and Reddit r slash Indie Heads discovered it. When you look at that consciousness listening on Spotify, you will see that the first track, a quick one before blah blah blah, has 8 million listens and the next track, an absolute banger that is Blood Hell, has 16 million. Right after that, it all drops to 3 million listeners from 16. You know why? Because the trauma caused from blood hail was too much for some people. Personally, I call them cucks. <laughs> because a real giga chad like me would want to listen to more Have a Nice Life after blood hail. Even the titles of the songs are helpless. I genuinely don't know what happened to the artist that made him this quote unquote sad, but I, 
I don't love, the big gloom, who would leave their son out in the sun, and there is no food. This album is the epitome of what Zero Pussy does to a man. The artist also included a 70 page booklet with the album. The booklet is exploring the same themes and details about a made up religion called Antiochianism. Knowing that an individual death is meaningless, any individual death, especially your own, that you are not a person but a statistic, and noticing more and more each day, the countless deaths that occur around you, of other people, of animals, of insects, of the sick and infirm, of accident victims, of plants ripped from the earth and worms crushed beneath the blades of plows, of authors in their rooms, scribbling out desperate words in the back of books no one will ever read, even the shattering of molecular bonds, the distant... <laughs> The disintegration of atomic structures happening in every moment, millions in each nanosecond, everywhere. This is that consciousness, and it begs the question, what is the point? The booklet is made by a professor of religious history from the University of Massachusetts, Amherst in 2007. The booklet includes some extremely cool drawings and is very aesthetically pleasing, it will be linked in the description. As you would expect, their lyrics are not the usual quote unquote I married your dad, I fucked your mom, I love gang violence type, but you did expect right. The lyrics are more there is no death because there is no life type. To be honest, I don't even know what the fuck they're going on about most of the time, because they sing about basically everything, ranging from uh, their lyrics being about earth destroying golems, knocking down mountains and destroying everything in their sight. As time passes, the golems grow restless, they have no purpose, no reason for their creation. They're wandering, immortal, massive machines who can only destroy, but they cannot be destroyed. This existence is tiring, being a machine that can only destroy, not create, is inherently distressing. In addition, once all is destroyed, there is nothing left to do. The golems yearn for death, but they cannot die, they cannot even speak. But if they could, the only thing they would say would be, we wish we were dead. To haha board game reference, holy fucking shit 40,000 is like Warhammer guys, Warhammer 40,000 you know? Bruh. One of their most popular songs and personally my favorite, Bloodhail describes the human capacity for indifference and references one of Antiochus's lectures in the booklet that came with the album. Their album cover is also pretty interesting. The cover is not some 3D NFT lookalike piece of shit like Ghana's new album. Instead, it's a painting done in se There are kids yelling outside my house. I will go and f Instead, it's a painting done in 1793, The Death of Marat, by Jacquel Louis David, of the murdered French revolutionary leader slash conspiracy theorist Jean Paul Marat. He had a debilitating skin condition and had to spend a lot of his time in the bath because of it. During one of these baths, he was stabbed and killed by some French art hoe. She did not leave the room though, she just stayed there and was executed 4 days later. Sansu was right, French pussy does indeed break a man. The letter in his hands reads, Given that I am unhappy, I have a right to your help. The original letter, with bloodstains and bathwater marks still visible, has survived and is currently intact in the ownership of some dude with the coolest fucking name I've heard in a long time, Robert Lindsay, 29th Earl of Crawford. This was probably the best album cover they could have chosen, rather than the alternative of having a shit album cover that doesn't even represent what it will sound like. For example, nobody will look at this album cover and go, yeah, this seems like a nice, positive music. It's like looking at Red Light's album cover, you already know it's going to be the best Blade album. Have a Nice Life is a post-punk band from the mythical land that lies between New York City and Massachusetts, Middletown, Connecticut. The band was founded in the year 2000 by two dudes, Dan Barrett and Tim McCuga. Their debut album, the album that I was talking about, Death Consciousness, has received critical acclaim since its release in 2008. You will be surprised, but both members are not assholes or druids that only speak in reverb. Dan Barrett is actually a very nice looking bold gentleman and the second guy Tim McCuga is a school teacher. Once being recognized by their student by asking him, quote unquote, are you the have a nice life guy? 
He also runs a music side project, Floors of St. Francis, which is originally some black and white Italian movie and if you listen to his side projects, it sounds like a creepy pasta. Dan Barrett, however, has two side projects, Giles Corey and Black Wing, and even though he looks like a very nice man, his music also sounds like a creepy pasta. Despite rarely dropping music and even more rarely going on concerts, they've developed a cult audience of which I'm a part of. And remember, when you ask a guy what he thinks about have a nice life, if they respond with anything other than who are they, that man is dealing with demons. Their side projects will be linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. If I made any mistakes in this video, please comment down below so I can ignore them. Like and subscribe. Bye bye.